Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Alan Hathaway. I'm glad you joined me for this particular sermonette this morning. Uh, I want to talk to you about Arise, My Love. And this comes from uh, Song of Songs, chapter 2, beginning in verse 10. I don't want to go into that idea of allegorization of this particular song. I believe Solomon wrote it as a love song between a husband and wife uh, in the first few days of their marriage and in those experiences that couples go through during that time. But I think it does have some lessons to talk to us about the excitement of spring. Uh, I know over this last year and a half as we struggled with the pandemic and other things that uh, I felt a little depressed and a little frustrated with life and with uh, circumstances in our culture. But I thought about uh, as spring has kind of come and as we've faced this first day of May, I felt a kind of an excitement and an exuberance about life and about hope for the future. And I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Uh, the bridegroom says to uh, the bride, arise, my love. Let us go out into the fields during this beautiful spring day and enjoy the beauty of nature and enjoy the beauty of the day. He talks about the voice of the turtle dove is heard in the land and, and the beauty of the figs as they are beginning to fill out on the fig trees and, and the wonderful aroma of the grapevines as they are flowering and beginning the process of flowering. And he says, come and enjoy this with me. And I felt that excitement of the enjoyment of life and the thrill of life. There's a, there's a tendency in our relationships to go through phases. Even our, our relationship with God goes through phases. There are times when we go through difficult and dark times in our relationship with God as Christians. And we, we struggle with this whole uh, experience. Uh, the, and sometimes we struggle with despair. But we also have those moments of exuberance and excitement as we work our way through life. And I thought about that in relationship to my experience with Christ. Uh, there are times when I feel very close to him and other times when I am struggling with that. We experience that because we are human and we go through phases of relationship. Even the book Song of Songs talks about the phases of relationship that this young couple is going through in their, their first few weeks of marriage. And you even get in on on a, an argument that they have, if you read through the book, and the struggle of that argument as they face one another and, and uh, struggle with uh, likes and dislikes. And sometimes we even struggle with God over our likes and dislikes. So we look at this kind of thing, and I, I think Christ invites the church, as it were, in this age to arise and come out and smell the the aroma of life as it begins and to look at the budding of the fig trees as as the fruit begins to develop and also to hear the sound of the turtle dove the turtle dove is an interesting situation in ancient israel uh, turtle doves still exist in that part of the world they are a migratory dove. Uh, there are doves that's, that are permanent residents in Palestine, uh, but this particular dove is a migratory bird, and it during the wintertime it goes and uh, lives in North Africa during the winter and then returns around May 1st to Israel. And you can hear the cooing of this bird, as it has almost a, a laughing kind of coup that uh, seems to invite you into the excitement of the year, invite you into the summer with a sense of excitement. May is not the beginning of spring. Uh, the 
the equinox is the beginning of spring, and that actually happened on uh, um, March 20th of this year, but we're about halfway between there and the summer solstice, which marks sort of the peak of summer. And so we're halfway between there, and flowers are starting to burst forth, and there is an excitement to the day, an excitement to the to the beginning of life springing up anew. Solomon talks about this excitement, and I think we experience it as we arise and go out to life, to meet life. May Day, or the 1st of May, has a very long history in uh, Western culture. It actually goes back to the Roman culture when they celebrated a minor uh, Roman festival called Flor Florilia, uh, which meant simply the festival of flowers. It was a time when they celebrated uh, the, the popping up out of the ground of the flowers and the enjoyment of that time. Later on, uh, Celtic people and uh, our Testimony for this only goes back to 900, but it talked about the Celtic celebrator, uh, celebration of uh, Beltane, and Beltane was the lucky fire. And so uh, this celebration was very often uh, the Celtic people would uh, celebrate the moving of the cattle from uh, the uh, winter pasturage to the spring and summer pasturage up in the higher elevations and part of that would be to light a great fire and very often the cattle and and the sheep would jump over that fire or be forced to jump over that fire uh, and the uh, also people would jump over the fire as a way of protecting themselves from the uh, spirits the fairies as it, as they were thought to exist and beginning the year with a sense of purpose and direction one of the most interesting celebrations that developed uh, actually around 1300 or actually around 1350 is the first recording of it we have is the Maypole. Uh, the Maypole was actually uh, the setting up of a large pole in the churchyard originally, and they would have ribbons that were strung down from it, and there would be a folk dance that would interweave those ribbons around the Maypole, and it was then bestrewn with uh, basically flower wreaths and to celebrate the beginning of May, the uh, beginning of hope. What caught me was the fact that this is connected very closely, it seems, with the Black Death that began in uh, around 1346. And somehow these celebrations go right along with that, and I wonder if that the May, Maypole isn't a way of, of celebrating hope in the midst of this very dark period of European history where so many people died of plague. This uh, time of, of reoccurring plagues would go on for almost two centuries in Europe, and it's interesting how that the Maypole celebrations swept across Europe also during this period of time. And you see them growing in intensity and growing in, in celebration from the churchyard to the center of town, as it were. And so it's kind of interesting to watch that development of the Maypole. And I wonder if there wasn't some kind of a connection uh, between those two events in European history. There is the sense of hope that comes with this and the intertwining of the community trying to, to make sense out of this darkness that they were living through. And then I thought very much about the hope of the May basket, the May Day basket. Uh, it developed in connection with the Maypole celebration. And in that May basket, it was a way of saying to somebody that you felt like they were important, someone you cared about and loved, that they were important and valued by you. 
And so this whole May Day celebration is about valuing people and the importance of people and the importance of our relationships. It is also about the importance of a relationship with God. God calls us, as it were, to arise, my love. Come out and experience the joy of life. Experience the hope of the resurrection. Experience life at its best, not because everything always works out well, but because we have a hope that is beyond this moment. In Revelation, we are told that the bride of Christ is the New Jerusalem at the, and that the foundation of the New Jerusalem is the church because we are told that the foundation of the New Jerusalem are the 12 apostles. And so it is the church that is the foundation of the New Jerusalem. And we as members of the church have been invited to the banquet and we are hoping for that celebration. We are waiting for that celebration, that joy, that excitement, that dynamic moment when we hear the turtle dove, when we hear the or smell the aroma of the grapes bursting forth, the flowers bursting forth, and when we see the fruit that has been produced. And we understand that God is at work, no matter how dark circumstances may be, no matter how painful things might happen in our lives, no matter how dreary the day seems at times, there is hope. There is hope because Christ has won the victory and he has called us as his own. And so there is no reason to despair. There is hope. And so this May Day, I hope you celebrate. I hope you celebrate the relationships with friends and family. And if you're married, I hope you celebrate the day with your spouse and enjoy their company and thank God for them. And thank God for your relationships with people. But most of all, I hope you celebrate your relationship with Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful May Day.